It took me a long time to learn how to bind like a boss, and today I'm going to teach you how to. First, I cut two and a half inch strips, and this is for machine binding. So this is my shape cut ruler that cuts really quickly. Everybody always wants to know where I get it. I buy it from Walmart because it's cheapest there, but you can get it from quilt shops. Here we go. We're putting the binding together, and I like to sew on diagonal. So the two short sides go together and away into the inside of the machine, and then you go from corner to corner. Some people put a pencil mark on here to guide them. Some people do other things like a pressing mark or whatever. I just eyeball it because it works. I just decided I didn't want to do more work. I do a lot of binding. So practice and you'll get good at it too and you can eyeball it. Here I'm trimming. So you go up about a quarter inch. I do a little more and then you cut. And what happens with this is as you press these open, it makes it so binding doesn't stick in one spot in your binding. It spreads out the bulk and so that there really isn't bulk. So you press these seams open you get them ready to make the binding. And this is the binding. I don't bind on a bias unless I'm doing a curve, and then I'll cut bias binding. Straight edge binding is what I do normally. Here we press our binding in half, getting it ready to sew onto the quilt. One of the rookie mistakes is to pull the top against away from your iron. So be careful not to do this. You don't want to distort it. You very carefully simply fold it in half and make sure nothing's being pulled or distorted and that will make your binding work better when you're ready to sew it and use it. Also make sure every single seam is pressed open as you go because that is what keeps the bolt from being too much. What you're watching me do right now is prep the binding to put on my shoulder. Whether I have a king size quilt or a baby quilt, I always put it on my shoulder so it just comes off as I need it. I generally start my binding about as far from the corner as you're seeing me go because when I finish the binding I like to have it in there. I'm stitching at a 2.5 inch stitch length and here we stitch. You can notice that I'm doing a quarter inch in from the blue but that I have a little piece of the quilt on the edge and so my seam is actually bigger than a quarter inch because I like my bindings to be bigger. That's why I cut it at 2.5 inches and truly this is preference. If you want smaller bindings the principles of how I'm binding will still work for you. You can have your binding be smaller. You'll just have to figure that out. As we come to the corner our goal is to end the same distance away as the seam that we're sewing. So we're gonna have it right there exactly as best we can in the corner, as far away from one edge as the other. So I've figured out where I think that is and I stop there. As soon as I get there, I lift this up and straight across. I put the ruler there just to show you. I don't usually do that, but I want you to see it's a straight edge from the bottom of the quilt all the way over and that's the cut edge of the binding. Then you flip it back. And this, I don't know, this took me so long to learn because everywhere I went to learn it felt confusing. So I have to simplify everything for myself so that I can learn it. And once I simplify it, then I can get it in my brain and keep it forever. So that is why my instruction for this is so simple. You sew, you get to the corner, and I'm gonna really stop and show you on this next corner so that you can really see and learn what I'm doing now that you have an idea. So go perfectly to the little spot, lift your needle, then you see I'm pulling it up so you can see, you put it down where it goes exactly, you want it to be a, a you fix that so it's exactly to the edge of it so that it makes a really nice square. You turn it and start sewing. That is it, and I don't pull it far away. There's not a lot of thread hanging around there. You just barely pull it forward a couple inches, maybe, it's usually less than two inches, and then you fix your binding. I'm going to demo it to you two more times, and here you can see the binding coming off my shoulder. It just so nicely holds that binding out of your way, so it's never a hassle. You come here to the corner, straight across. See that straight edge? 
make it so lined up. Then you hold it with your fingers, make sure it's square, that, that it's not kittywampus at the top where the fold is, turn sideways, and off you go to sew. It truly is that simple. Really, it took me so long to learn this. I think you'll be able to learn it just this easy now because I had to simplify these steps in my head. They all seemed confusing at first. This is our last corner. We're going to go around the corner, sew it, and then I know because I always start there that this is where I stop to make the final join. And I wanna give myself plenty of room. You don't wanna to have too little backing between for your join. I like to give myself a lot of room because it makes it less of a hassle and less of a fight. Here, I'm going to make an X. So I'm pressing, leaving enough room to be able to have this happen. That's what you see me measuring and making sure. Yep, plenty of room. I'm going to press with a really hot iron and that will make it so that I have an X on the fabric. But I pull the other one down and I leave an eighth of an inch about, not exact, but about an eighth of an inch gap. If you don't do that, if you make it exact, what happens is you end up with extra fabric. So I don't really know why, I'm sure there's some kind of science involved, but just be sure to leave an eighth of an inch and then press both sides. So this is my best trick. Take a pin, get rid of all that excess quilt, and then it won't be fighting you. I just pin it together so it won't mess with me for the rest of this process. So you take the top piece, you make sure nothing's twisted, and you open it up. And see, there's the X right there. You take this bottom part, make sure it's exactly there, and you put it on. Nothing's twisted. You open it up and you line that X up. You can see the press lines matching each other. And you can peek under them and see, yep, they're exactly on. That's where I want it. Oh, great job. Some people pin. The pinning never stays straight, so I don't pin. Again, I'm just going to sew it. And what you're going to do is have that short side be away, and you go from top to bottom, right parallel with your quilt. You take that top piece, put it down, the bottom piece, make sure nothing's twisted, put it up, and we're going to sew from top to bottom right through the middle of the X. You can see it all lined up with the light of the sewing machine. I eyeball it, but there's a spot in the middle to eyeball with, so it's pretty easy to be accurate. Head towards the bottom corner, and you will have the perfect join. It's your last join of the quilt, and the binding will be done. Don't ever, ever cut this until you test it. So you test it like this, you open it up. Yes, it's going to be perfect. So you take your little scissors, trim it, and then we open up that seam. And it will be as if you don't have an end anywhere. No one will know which join was the last one that you sewed together because it will just be seamless. You won't be able, I mean, I guess there are seams, but you know what I mean. You will be able to just have it look wonderful. There we are, it lays perfectly happily flat. As you bind, be sure not to pull anything or distort anything. You, that's part of sewing. You don't wanna ever pull your binding away from the quilt or harder than the quilt. Some people pin this next part. We're sewing the top stitching. I don't pin. I have pins, I have clips, I've tried both. I choose not to do it because I have found that by learning muscle memory and holding it, I get it more accurately straight. So you take it, you put the bottom up, it's like a package, you get it folded, you get the corner to the corner. I make it look really easy. If you struggle with this a little, it's because it takes some muscle memory to get good at it. Then you turn, you pivot on the corner and keep sewing. Have it be as straight as possible. You want it to be the same thickness. So if you've sewn straight to put it on, when you put it on the back, it works best. You sew right at the edge. As long as you're consistent with yourself, that's a folded side and it will work. And then you come to the corner. Here I'm showing it even clearer. You fold it over, you make that fit, you straighten it as best you can. You just sew straight to that little corner and get in the corner, then you pivot and sew the other direction. 
The seam underneath is just a little bit in from the binding, so you do see a stitch line. I don't mind that. If I'm doing a really special quilt, I will still do hand binding. I did that kind of binding for years of my life when I first began, but I really do think there's a great place in society and in my life especially for machine binding. It looks really nice. As I've gotten good at it, it's wonderful and it's so speedy so I can get more done. Here I go again, fold it up, have it go straight across and sometimes you have to fiddle with the corner to make it work. Then we sew, needle down, pivot, and corners are the hardest part of this. Actually, some people have a hard time sewing on the edge, but it really does just take practice. Tell yourself you'll do 10 quilts before you give up on this because it looks easier than it is and you can get it. You just have to practice your own muscle memory and make it work. Here we're coming to the end of our binding. And as we come to the end of our binding, I just sew top stitch over the stitches I already had. You cut them off and you have this beautiful binding that looks so great. It will hold up. You can see the stitch along the back. It looks wonderful. I, I've won first place ribbons with these quilts at the state fair. So the judges didn't seem to mind. It is really great binding. And you too can make this great binding. Stay merry and creative.